All right, today I'm working on a 2005 BMW 645 Ci with a 4.4, and the transmission is the ZF6 HP26 we're gonna be taking apart. So what's going on with this is it has the typical 4F85 ratio monitoring clutch E. So pretty much uh, what the guy was feeling is the transmission was slipping pretty much on the 3-4 shift. That's when the E-clutch gets applied. The E-clutch is on in 4th, 5th, and 6th. So more than likely what we're going to find with this is either the very common worn rear stator bushing and or, and, or we're going to find possibly, I'm sure the stator bushing is going to be worn, but we also may find the E-clutch uh, flaked off as well. When I drove it around, it worked okay, but when it gets hot, it, I believe is when the problem starts and typically when you're dealing with the worn bushing it will work okay when it's cold and then when it gets hot you'll have this problem so we're going to tear it down and see what we got i do have some parts coming i have a bushing kit coming that of course all the bushings are going to be changed and then i got my overhaul kit or my banner kit the pan i have already because initially when he brought it in we thought we were going to do a service, but you know, we put the scan, we drove it, it actually worked okay because he just lives a few blocks away. But we put the scan tool on it and then we got this code, ratio monitoring clutch E. So we called him to find out, hey, is this thing slipping into higher gears? And he, and he says, actually it was. So we're going to do the transmission because the service really would not help him at all. Um, so we're going to tear this down and as we tear it down, one thing I want to do talk about is if you ever had to order the pump, and I think I spoke about this once before, but you know, a lot of times when you have to order a pump for this transmission, they may ask you the inside diameter uh, of where the rear stator bushing is, but you also have to look at something else uh, because it's very possible you may get the wrong stator uh, in the front, which I'm gonna show you because they're small and large depending on the engine size. And if you have the larger one, and the smaller one goes in, which is too small to fit the stator of the converter, you won't have any stall speed and the thing is just gonna take off like a bat out of hell and it'll, you have to be holding the brake and it's gonna be, it wants to just take off from the line like the engine is racing too high. So we're gonna talk about that. Um, all right, so I just wanna do an intro after hours and we're going to tear this thing down tomorrow morning, but what I did want to just go over real quick while I can, um, I have the pan because at first we were going to do the service. So this is the pan to the ZF6 HP26. And I have an X5 here with a 3.0 2008. And that is the ZF6 HP19. And that is here for a leak. And I found the pan is cracked. So I just kind of want to put these two pans side by side just in case you have to do a quick reference. Hey, what transmission do I have? Uh, a lot of times they may want the number off the code, the 1068 number, to identify it. But I could show you how to identify uh, a 6HP26 pan to a 6HP19 pan. This way you can maybe just look under and say, oh, I got a 6HP19, so let me, let me order a pan for that if you wanted to do a service. Just in case you're not sure what you have. You can always, you know, you can always uh, run your VIN number or you can always send your VIN number to me and you could say, hey, this is my VIN number, usually within the United States. Uh, what transmission do I have? I'll be happy to run the VIN for you and tell you transmission type. Uh, sometimes, depending on engine size, like with Chevy's, you know, it may come up sometimes with a 4L60E or 4L80E, and if it comes up with both, uh, also with, four, uh, um, with Ford, sometimes it may come up with a 4L100, 4L70W, and the trick to that is to count the pan bolts. All right, so let me just get a little closer. I just want to go over these real quick, and then tomorrow morning, we're going to tear down this transmission. Uh, I like to, I do, of course, do have a 6HP26 tear down video, but you know, obviously it's a very popular transmission. I get a ton of questions on it. So we'll tear it down together. And you know, I did one a couple years ago. So, you know, now I have um, better lighting and stuff like that. So uh, it might be a little better and, and maybe we can go over some stuff that I didn't go over on the last video. 
All right, so let me just get a little closer and let's talk about these pans real quick and then we'll pick it up tomorrow morning. Okay, so here are the two pans. And of course, the first thing I look for when I order these from my supplier are the three magic words, which you can't see, made in Germany. And this one here, made in Germany. Okay, so this is the 6HP26 pan and this basically is kind of flat going all the way across, okay? Here is your filter, and this goes into your pump. All right, they both have the two magnets on them, but in different spots, but basically the 6HP26 pan here is gonna be flat. And this is my supplier's part number for that. That's Transstar, and this is an OE pan. I'm hoping that came out. I hope there's not too much of a glare. A part number on this one. Uh, okay, 6HP19 has this, has this indent right here in the back, and it has this bump up here, uh, filter and two magnets, but you're going to be looking at this as it's installed in the car, so you're going to have this right here, this big indent, which the 6HP26 does not have. So that's a good way to tell, you know, because when you get these X5s, depending on the engine size, it could be a 6HP26, it could be a 6HP19. This is a three liter, so it's the 6HP19. And when I looked underneath it to see what transmission we were dealing with, because sometimes it's so covered up in there, you can't see the tag or you can't read the tag. I saw this and I said, we're dealing with a 6HP19, okay? So that is the difference between the two pans. So just kind of, you know, you can take a look. Here is the 19, and the 26 is flat. All right, so I just wanted to go over that with you. All right, so again, we're going to be tearing this 6HP26 down tomorrow morning. Uh, pretty much, you got your cooler lines here. And they do sell these O-rings separately, uh, BMW. I actually keep these in stock because we do a lot of these units. All right, you need a special socket here, 34 millimeter. We're going to talk about that. All right, your uh, wires go into here. Is your mechatronic sleeve, and this is your fill and check. And of course, you know you got to do the two separate fills. The first fill, engine off. You fill it till it runs off, and then you start it engine on running and you fill it again until it runs out okay then I would drive this thing around and when it's at normal operating temperature you check the fluid level again all right if you ever wanted to drain these um, you know they do have drains here uh, me personally I don't like to open these it's plastic um, I think I did in the beginning when we first started working on these you know to drain the fluid out or if we were doing a service or something. And a couple of them actually leaked on me. So ever since then, I never, I never really touched this anymore. I just take the pan down. There's usually room enough to do that. All right, so uh, that's just my little thing uh, with these pans. And also over here again, here is the drain here. I mean, if you're, if you're draining the transmission, you're gonna change the pan, you do an overhaul, sure, absolutely. But, you know, just say you do the overhaul and say, oh, you know, we got a problem. I got to drop the pan again. I got to check out the valve body. Um, I would just drop the pan, save the fluid in a clean bucket and drop the pan instead of taking that drain out. All right, so I think that is about it. And we'll catch up with you guys tomorrow morning for the teardown of this ZF6HP26. All right, so back with you this morning. And the first thing we're going to do with this here is just uh, we're going to take this uh, flange off and the end nut or the flange nut as they call it and that is a 34 millimeter 12 point socket. All right, so the nut is staked in a couple of spots. So I'll just unstake the nut and it'll spin right off. All right, I already did that. I actually used, you know, something like my uh, bushing uh, splitter. All right, so here is the uh, end nut and it's staked, you know, 180 degrees apart. They do sell them new if you need. Ericsson sells those uh, flange nuts. All right, here's the flange and you got a seal in here. Okay. All right, here's the 
here is the fill and check plug. All right, so I took um, most of the pan bolts out except for them because I was draining the transmission. Sir. Okay. All right. So the T40. I'll take the pan off. Here's the pan. Magnets look okay. I'm not sure how many miles he has on this. I know he doesn't use it very often. Okay. Alright, so just by looking at it, we can tell this is an end shift valve body because we have no solenoid here. The MV2 and MV3. No, no solenoid. All right, so we're gonna lift up on this tab. Okay. And these come right out. So you see these, these orange O-rings? These are the ones that tend to leak a lot. So if you, for instance, I just, I just, at a friend of mine's car, um, I just changed one of these and he had called me he has a, a station actually a few blocks away and he has a, I think it's a 7 series BMW so he says um, hey you know I uh, he says tell me about the pass-through connector in the in the BMW transmission I says yeah where the wires going he says yeah he says it's leaking I say yeah, it's pretty common he goes but I changed it about a year and a half ago and it's leaking again so I got one from Transtar, and it actually came with black seals on it. And when I went ahead and dropped the pin and pulled the tab down, I mean, the thing just fell right out. And it had these orange seals on it. So you really want to go maybe like with the black seals. And usually when you get the, if you get an OE kit, a ZF kit, you're going to get a new sleeve or if you get a trans tech kit you'll get the o-rings for the sleeve but i tend to find honestly that those o-rings there tend to leak a lot all right so let's get this valve body oh. So this should lift right off. Okay, move this aside. We'll look at that after. All right, the bridge seal. Not cracked, but it's going to be changed. All right, so let's see if we can get these, these sealing sleeves out. Yeah, we see those are gonna come out.
All right, these also, of course, they come in the kit. They're gonna be changed. All right. Next thing we'll do, we're gonna take the pump bolts out. I believe that is a 27. I also believe in the ZF kit. Oh, they give you the pump bolts as well. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, we're gonna take a screwdriver, just get a little pry, either here or here, and that'll take the pump out and the front section out. definitely look worn. All right, so here is the uh, B clutch will open. And of course the A E is in there. Here is the pump. And I can tell you for sure that bushing looks worn out. Seems coming apart fairly easy. All right, now we got the big snap ring in there. So we want to try to get that moving. Uh, let's see. Try to get this snap ring moving here. And the end is right there, so. Should be able to get under there and hopefully twist it. Okay. 
go. This stamp ring actually is the same on both sides. All right, now, let's see if this set of support will come out. Fairly easy. Okay. There's the C clutch, and now we're gonna get the Take the planet along with the D clutch out. Bearing race here. And the other bearing, of course, is here. All right, just in case, I don't know if you guys saw that, but again, bearing race. Okay. And then we got a shim. on here. All right, we have another shim that goes on the back of the flange. Okay. I'll see if we can get that rear seal out. They normally pop right out. I normally have the case standing up. Let's see if we can just do it like this. Okay, easy enough. All right, and then here's a bearing in here. I'm gonna take the bearing out. Uh, the snap ring, there is a snap ring in here. And for that, these pliers. All right, so let's see. Okay. All right, again, snap ring is really the same on both sides. And this barrier will come right out. Okay, so the case is stripped. So let me get rid of the case. And we'll start uh, looking at the clutch drums and bushings. All right, so just give me a few minutes and I'll be right back. All right, so we're gonna start with the front of the unit with the A and the E clutch. All right, first I wanna take this bearing off, which goes on to the B, and that fits down in here. Remember, if you're changing the bushings, this bearing has a lip on it, so you have to knock the bushing down far enough so it doesn't hit the lip. All right, so we'll look at those clutches in a minute. All right, so let's take this apart. So we got a snap ring and we got a lock tab here. So pretty much, you know, it gets a little stuck there, so I'll just give it a shot. Shut it right up. Okay. All right, so first we're gonna take off this cover, which is also actually a clutch hub for the B clutch. All right, now the A clutch hub. Oh boy, that's all burnt up. All right, so we got a bushing here, and a bushing here, and you got a bearing there. Okay, E clutch hub. Uh, 
firing out. All right, so this E-clutch, she's burnt up. Let me go. see if I can sneak in a little bit closer. is totally worn out. Steels is still good, but the clutch is totally worn out. So between that and the bushing, there is your 4F85 code, which is ratio monitoring clutch E. So we have a uh, bushing in here. That's going to be changed. And there's the e-clutch. I'm going to clean. I'm going to clean that drum up around the outside. Okay. So now we got the A clutch. to do banner kits when I do these. All right, so now we got the planetary here, and I know I've said this many times, leave that washer alone. And there's a little uh, expensive little bugger if it breaks. It is plastic, so be very careful. All right, where's my light? All right, you know what, I gotta find, <clears throat> let me just find where I put my little flashlight. Maybe I left it up in the front. I don't see it. Because uh, I want to see if I can get this planetary out. Um, all right, just give me a minute. Let me go up in the front and take a look. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna attempt to push this snap ring out of the way to try to get this planetary out. You gotta do that to change the seals in the drum. I got one side up. I have to try to hold it up. bring back in place. Okay. Alright, so now when this goes back in, I'll just push it down and it'll snap right in place. Alright, so that came out fairly easy. Alright, and I know I've said this before. So when you take this apart, this is the, dr the drum and this is the piston. Okay, or the balance piston. <clears throat> and you gotta make sure that everything stays as is. So I mark the drum and I mark the piston and put it back the exact same way. And the two bushings in here, one here, and one here we're gonna change. All right, so that is the A clutch. All right, let's take a look at the B clutch. You got bushings on both sides of the drum also. Let me see what we have the mileage written down. 68,000 miles on this. 2005. 
Okay. A little dark. You know, it doesn't really matter. I'm changing them anyway. All right, so that is the B clutch. I got some burn marks on some, on steels, so these are going to be changed. I believe the way it goes is the uh, the B and the C frictions are the same, and the A and the D frictions are the same. All right, in here again the D. All right, these look pretty good. And the E saw, all burnt up. Reason for our code. Okay. Now right in here, we have a bearing race. So that's gonna go off. All right, right here, we have an open face bearing. That's on the center support. And you gotta kind of just watch. This could be a little tricky on how this goes. You have the, the split ring here holding the piston in, and then you have another split ring up here, um, pretty much holding this uh, the center piston in so it can't come up that high. You know, look and only come up so high. This setup's a little tricky, so you just got to kind of really look and see how it goes together uh, before you take it apart. Because you got the piston here, you got the bell bolt return spring, and you got another one here. Two, two, two split rings. So pretty much you got to take this one off first. All right, the big split ring, and then you'll be able to push the piston down, this little piston down, and get this ring out, and then you can take everything apart. So maybe we'll look at that. All right, so the pump. All right, we got a spacer here. And now, See how easy these are, these are going to come out. second here. I'm taking the body and gears out. I 
right, so we got a dot here, dot here, they both face up. All right, this looks good. You got a bearing instead of a bushing. Overall, you got an O-ring here. Looks good. Okay. So let's talk about this stator here. All right, if you ever have to order a pump, because, you know, maybe uh, the body and gears went bad, you might be able to get a body and gears, you may not be, but if you, you know, chances are if the pump goes bad, this is going to get screwed up. And pretty much just say you're going to have to get a good used pump. All right, so when you call up for the pump, the people may ask you, that's selling it to you, they want the inside diameter of the rear stator bushing. So you have to try to measure that as best you can. You know, I have the micrometer here, of course, or I can measure it and see what the measurement is, but that's fine. You know, there's the wider one, and I think this, I think just a couple of sizes. But the thing is, is what I had noticed one time when I had to order a pump, and it actually was for, this is a 645 2005, this is the first year this BMW came out. I had to order a pump for, I'm going to say it's maybe an 08 650 that came in with a bad pump. That's the reason why we got the job and the car did not move. Came from a BMW specialty shop next town over. And I had to get a pump for it because the thing was screwed up pretty good. So instead of trying to get this piece and that piece, the guy says, well, I got the whole pump. So they asked me what the inside diameter of the bushing was, and that's all they asked me. And I said, okay, so send it. And then, of course, whenever I get anything, it's, it has to get put it side by side, and you match everything up. All right, and the part that was different was this part. All right, this was correct. The, I tried it, the, the drum, the E-clutch shaft fit right through there, no problem. But then when I got over here, this one um, that they sent me was this size. And I guess maybe they, you know, of course, as they go through the years, they upgrade the motor. And I'm not sure if it, this one has a 4.4, maybe the, the later ones have a 4.8 or, or larger. This here was much bigger. So, but the stator was okay. And what I ended up doing was, mine, mine was much bigger, the one that came out of the car, and this is the one that, I had, that they had sent me. But I didn't need, really need the body and gear, so what I actually did was I just unbolted the stator and used my stator. But you have to watch this too, very important. For some reason, they don't ask you what the measurement of this is, they just ask you what the measurement of the the inside diameter of the rear stator bushing. All right, so again, if you buy anything used, just put it side by side, match it up, and make sure it is correct. So that's what you gotta watch out for when you're dealing with the cars with the larger engines. Okay, now with this here, we're gonna take this shim off. All right, so you got a bushing all the way down in here. And also the bearing race. And on some of these 6 HP 26s, this one is, this one, uh, it doesn't appear to be, but some of these 6 HP 26s, you got like three stake marks in this thing. And it would be a real pain to change this. And I say to that, if the bushing is good, leave it alone. Don't worry about it, you know. I'm looking in here and, and I can see the little oil holes or the little golf balls as I call them that are cut into the bushing for lube. And if they look good, leave it alone. All right, fast look at the valve body here. Uh, M-shift valve body. Of course, again, the absence of the MB2, MB3 solenoid. All right, so you have your yellow and blue solenoids. This is 
three yellow, three blue, one black. These are the EDS. The black is the MV1 solenoid. And they're all going to get changed. Brand new solenoid kit. And of course, as I go through, open the valve body, I'm going to get the new plate. Uh, B052 is the code. And on the other side, it should say A052. So this is, because of that code, I can tell you with generation one, of course, also All right, so I also wanted to go over the disassembly of the B clutch drum. All right, so I have the snap ring out already. Now, of course, you got to push down on this Belleville snap ring to release it to get the snap ring out, and I use this, which is a uh, spacer for an overdrive section for like a 46 RE. All right, it's a pretty good tool. I use it for other things as well. Okay, so I pushed down, was able to release the snap ring, and the snap ring is on the inside here. All right, and here is the spring seat, the snap ring seat, and this has a little ridge on it, and that ridge is gonna face up, okay? And this side that goes down is completely flat, and if there is any confusion, you can actually see witness marks from where the Belleville spring was hitting this. All right, so this is gonna go like this, and then the snap ring goes on the inside, along the inside here, okay? So we take that out, and now to get this little piston out, this little balance piston, if you will, there's another snap ring. Okay, just grab it here. Snap. Okay, there's that. And then this piston will come right out. All right, and then the main piston will come out. You know, maybe you got to turn it over, bang it on a bench, or blow it out, but. That I'm going to go over to the foot press and take this split ring off and we'll just kind of take this thing apart together. But you got to kind of know how this goes together. It can get a little confusing. So let me, and here's the, uh, these usually stay in here. This is so the center support can't spin. These go into the case. One here, one here. Sometimes they'll fall out, sometimes they'll stay in. Okay. So let me do that and I will be back in a few minutes. All right, so I got the ring out and what I did is I took this steel plate that fit perfect over here. I took it over to the foot press, pressed it down and then these come right out. All right, so we're gonna take this off here, the Belleville return spring and then we'll be able to push this down that and then this will come right out now just note how how this is you know where uh, note how this is and how these go and that's where it can get a little confusing all right and then this will come out here that'll come out there and then you can go ahead and like for instance, let me just show you this here. All right, so this. If I can get this back on. Okay. Uh, so you have this. Where this is, you have this piece here. Okay, so just make a note of how the piston goes. And where this part goes, you have the little bleed hole in the piston. If you can see that. All right, so it can get a little confusing on how it goes, but just make a note of, of how it goes. Take a picture or whatever, note how the piston is to how these rings are. And then, here 
ring here, O ring here, and another O ring here. And that's the D clutch. So that could be a little tricky, so I just kind of wanted to show that to you guys. And if you put it together wrong, it may seem like it's not going together correctly. You know, like the, the ring won't seat in there correctly. All right, so that's about it on this 2005 BMW 645CI with the code 4F85, and we found the E-clutch pretty much burned up. Uh, we also found the rear stator bushing is worn out, which I'm sure attributed to that. So I got a banner kit coming, the bushing kit, should be here any time now. The pan I have already, because originally we were gonna do a service. Uh, converter is on the way. That was a few days out from Transtar, so I ordered that. And I just gotta really order the valve body plate and stuff like that, so. I thank you guys for watching. Have a great day, and we'll see you next one.